Hi again, Scott Mathias here. So in this video, we're going to do something really, really simple. The thing I found about raw food was how to actually get some uh, flexibility into creating raw food that was basically easy to do when you open the refrigerator, you looked in there and you had an idea about what to do. What I found was that I looked at individual ingredients and I just used my imagination. How can I blend them together? And without doubt, a lot of raw food preparation is about creativity, it's about imagination. If you think you don't have imagination, I'm sorry, everybody has it. You're born with equal amounts of imagination. It's just a matter of exercising the imagination muscle as far as raw food is concerned. You know, you can have any amount of recipes uh, until a cows come home. They're guidelines only. As far as I'm concerned, um, I find recipes a little tedious. But nevertheless, for those of you who are wanting to make that first step, they are a little bit of a guideline. And then I really invite you to deviate wherever you want to because you'll find so much satisfaction with it. Uh, now the recipe for the um, lovely three minute corn uh, salsa salad, three minutes if you're not talking like I'm talking to you. So what I've done is I've done a little bit of pre-preparation which makes the job a lot easier. And I will read the recipe to you but essentially what I've got here is fresh corn kernels, sliced red onion, sliced cherry tomatoes, diced bell pepper, red chili scrapings, well they're scrapings, they're just cut red chilies, um, some mini cauliflower florets, and if you haven't got that, just use the whites out of some uh, cabbage, which works really well as well. Some sliced mushrooms, and they can be basically uh, fresh mushrooms, or in my case, I use some marinated mushrooms, which we'll talk about further on in the video series. And uh, the last thing on there, yeah, some dill pickles or some sliced gherkins, which just, add some sweetness to it. Now, <clears throat> funnily enough, as I'm actually going through the recipe here, I'm salivating. And I find this happens a lot when I talk about raw food. So what I've done is on my little board here, I have created the bits and pieces that are required. And I'll just hold that there. The tomatoes diced, the red onion, um, the cauliflower, mushrooms, the gherkin, and some red pepper, and a little bit of chili here. I, I cut about half a red pepper, and you can vary the amounts. You know, nothing is set in stone anyway. You know that about life. So that's the most important thing about a recipe, nothing set in stone. So I'm going to use half the red pepper to go into the nut mayonnaise, which I'm going to do in just a sec. So essentially what we've got here, we have um, tomatoes going into the bowl, and I always pre-mix everything into a bowl first hand rather than putting it straight on the plate and, and hoping it will blend together. So I'll put the tomatoes in there and I'll put half the red pepper and it goes everywhere, but never mind. That's just the luck of the drawer, isn't it? When you're trying to do it the way I'm doing it. Uh, I'm going to add the gherkin and the onion. Probably easier if I just use my whole hands and pick it up and put it in like that because it feels good. This is really, really incredible. Uh, this is one of my most favorite dishes. Now the corn is going to go in just a second and I'll show you how to extract the corn from the corn cob. So this is quite a, a deliciously spicy salsa. There is the chili, which I love. And again, you know, chili is not mandatory. You can just stay with it as it is if you find basically the chili is too warm for you or too hot. But, you know, this is the sort of salad that I'll eat midwinter because the chili in itself is very, very warming. Uh, unlike, uh, you know, things like ginger, turmeric, galangal and what have you. And interestingly enough, kale uh, and hemp is also very warming because they are really concentrated proteins and they work brilliantly. So there are all our mixtures in, in there together. And there's one thing remaining. You just stir all that up, and it's just fabulous. Fab I can smell it now. It's just, just delicious. You stir all that so that you've got a nice little mixture. Just put that there for a sec. And take my corn. Now, I get corn from the cob from the market, corn on the cob from the market. Because I do live on my own, and I tend not to eat a lot anyway, um, what I do, instead of wasting the whole thing and stripping the outer layer off, I only strip off basically that area that I want to use uh, as part of the recipe. 
I then take my knife from the top. Now this tends to go all over the place, but that doesn't matter. And you just push down and take off what you need. Okay, so you take off what you need and then the rest basically is not going to dry out in the refrigerator. And I did remove uh, most of the woolly bits, the fur and stuff, but if any of that ends up in your salad, it doesn't really matter. Let's pick up these bits and pieces and add that to the balance of the ingredients that I've already put in here. And we're going to stir that up, stir that in. Now the red and the yellow often makes, you know, just makes a, a real conversation point too. So if you're serving this up to uh, friends or family or newbies, uh, you find that the whole look and feel of it is just really, really stunning. I'm going to put it onto a plate shortly so you'll see what I'm on about. Okay, so that's that. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of lime to this already because lime just gives it a lovely sweetness. Not on the recipe posted, but you can add it because I add it. And again, as I said, recipes are there to be used as guidelines only. Okay, so moving right along very quickly, otherwise we'll be here uh, for a very long time. I take my bullet. Now this is a magic bullet. This is the, the two cup bullet that you can buy as seen on TV or any of the um, discount shops anywhere that you might be on your, on, on your part of the planet. You can never have enough nut mayo. Now the nut mayonnaise is going to go with the, the uh, lovely corn salsa onto a serving dish and you can never have a nut. It's the sort of thing that you enough nut mayo. You can store it in your refrigerator, you've got it there and you can actually make a lot of things happen with it. So the first thing you do is I'm going to take about half a cup of cashew milk. Now you saw this in another video and I add the cashew milk to this here. And that's going to form the basis of everything. I'm going to add a few other bits and pieces to it. So just a little bit more, about half a cup. And I better get the base of that because I forgot that in my preparation. So that's ready to go. So that's a half a cup of cashew milk. Uh, half a cup of macadamia nuts or fines. Now I use fines which are basically ground macadamia nuts. They're a lot cheaper and uh, they just are, are partially ground ready to go. So I'm going to add that to the mixture as well. Now this adds a real sweetness to the, to the, to the entire mixture which is just really, really fabulous. It's really good. Um, now half a uh, teaspoon of tahini. Now these are whole stone ground sesame seeds. That's what that's what tahini is, and we'll just put that in there, like so. And this adds a lovely creamy texture to to it as well. One thing about tahini is try and keep it refrigerated because once you open it, it tends to develop a bitterness after a while. So always keep it refrigerated after you open it. Just doing a little bit of the taste test there. We're going to put the other half of the bell pepper that I cut before into here and that adds a really, really red uh, texture to the outcome, which is really neat, which you don't normally get in other mayonnaises. I mean, it's everything that's white and I tend not to want to eat things that are white. Um, we've got the bell pepper in there, a clove of garlic, which will pop in here as well. And I'm going to put a sprinkle of paprika and paprika, for those who don't know, is actually... Um, a sweet um, Hungarian uh, paprika. There you go. And you can buy that at the health food shop or wherever. I'm going to add a little seasoning. Because I've done this many times before, I pretty well know basically what I'm after here. And I, I tend to like it a little bit um, seasoned, more than average, because I believe that we still need our salts. Don't deny yourself of salt. Especially if you're on a raw diet, you need salts and some ground pepper in here too which is really, really fab. Now the recipe doesn't say it, but here's Scott breaking the rules again. Uh, I also put some, some lime juice. I put the balance of the lime juice in here as well. You can, you can never go far with lime juice. It's just really fabulous. And you know, it's so um, alkaline for the body. It's remarkably alkaline for the body. So put the base onto the bullet and you're ready to go. And put that on there, let's turn it on at the wall and give it a good burst, all right? And after a while, this will go a lovely color, a lovely red color. That's pretty well it. 
And we'll just have a little bit of a taste test here. Mmm, needs just a bit more seasoning. And we'll do that. And again, always, you know, taste to your own needs at the end of the day. It makes a world of difference. I'll put a little bit more lime in there as well. And uh, we'll give it another bit. Actually, uh, normally what you do is um, you want to come out with something just a little bit thicker. And you can actually make it thicker or thinner depending on your needs, just by adding a little bit more macadamia to it. All right. Now this is the mayo that you'd normally have in a jar and refrigerator that would stay in a jar and refrigerator. Mm, that's better. For a very long time, the commercially produced mayos. Now I just um, serve up the corn salsa onto the plate. And um, you can make a communal plate if you want, or you can actually just do your own, depending on the needs. And because this is going to be my dinner tonight, because I'm recording this tonight, night time, I've just put that on a lovely white plate like that. You can do the same. I love the presentation. I uh, love the way you can present raw food. And we'll just put a little bit of this on here. Just sensational. And you can garnish this with whatever you like. And uh, what have I got to garnish? Well, I know what I've got to garnish. I've got a little bit of dried kale. Because I dry my kale. All my herbs are outside, so I wasn't that well prepared. But you get the drift. Dried kale. And this is, is just chopped finely. And just sprinkled on the top like that. Finish this off with a bit of pepper seasoning. And what you have is something really, really extraordinary. Now that there is a, is a meal fit for a king. And when you taste this, your taste buds will just go skyrocket. You'll just go out and off the scale. Okay, so you've got your nut mayo. You've got your corn salsa. Very, very simple. The recipe has been posted. I hope that helps you get to uh, deal with some of the mechanics associated with making this dish. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm off to enjoy this. In the meantime, stay healthy, wealthy, and wise, okay? Cheers now. Okay, you thought that that was the end of the video. Well, it sort of was, but when I began eating the corn salsa with the nut mayo, I just had to actually come back and tell you how fabulous this is. You know, even when I make it myself, I'm astounded at the taste. The taste is just unbelievable. Uh, I've got a little bit of zinginess from the lime, a little bit of zinginess from the hot pepper. I taste the sweetness from the um, chili, uh, from the uh, gherkin, the dill pickle. Uh, you've got the crunchiness of the corn in there, which is just fabulous. Absolutely complete meal, and I can't recommend this highly enough. It's a... Mm. It's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I hope you enjoy it as much as I am. Remember, play around for the recipe and have a lot of fun. Okay? Enjoy being raw. Cheers now.